talk about chapters 34 to 44 are just the end of this awesome book, Pax Journey Home by Sarah Pennypacker. So this is actually the second book of a series, and the first book is Pax. It's a really famous, Pax is a really famous book. I have made a book about it, and um, so, yeah, I really like that book. And um, so, Pax Journey Home, when I read it, I was like, oh, this is a great book. And so it was just a great book um, after Pax. So I was really impressed about how Sarah Pennypacker had just made another awesome book. Because mostly, um, like after an exciting book, like there's a series, but like the next, but the next book in the series aren't that good compared to the first book. But I have to say that this book was just awesome, um, and I, I have to be really impressed about it, about this. And so this book was illustrated by John Classen. Yeah, the illustrations are pretty good in my opinion. And so yeah, but um, so. I, I advise that you read the first book, or you will maybe you won't may, uh, understand some things going on here. So please read the first book first, and because I've got a book club about it, um, you can just do uh, my book club, and then and then you have to do this book. But if you've already done that, then um yeah, we're set. Okay, okay. Let's start with chapter thirty-four, and just by this, you can see that it's Peter, right? Because it's the head of Peter, and when it's the and when it's the head of Pat which um, is this, wait, let me, see. yeah, which is this, um, this, that means that we're in Pax's point of view, right? And, but anyway, yeah, let's go to Pierre. Uh, my pages are stuck again, and I've just lost track. Okay, now to chapter 34, okay. So, um, do you think that, so Peter, right, Peter does some of his, old habits, like dragging his mattress off the bed and shoving it out the window, right? But this is for a different cause. And have you ever done the same old habits but for a different cause before? Has that never happened to you and did you just end, like have you never even like thought of it? Never even real, well, well, I, 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 writing, well, at first I just did my diary, but then this, but, but then I did writing for a different cause, which is making books. And that's why I'm right now on book number two. And um, I, I really like it. So, and then, um, do you think that, do you think that um, Peter, right? Peter and Pax, they've gone together. And do you think that they're gonna live together? Or do you think that Pax is gonna go back to the wilderness and Peter is gonna live? In this house with Fola, we we don't know right then. And and anyway, speaking about what's gonna happen, like we are not very sure what's gonna happen to Peter. In your when you were reading the book, did you think that Peter was gonna return to Fola and apologize maybe, or did you think that he was gonna keep on living in his old home, or do you think that he's not? Or what? I mean, really, what do you think is gonna happen here? Who do you think he's gonna live with, or do you think he's gonna live alone? And so, if you have been Peter, do, would you have even believed um, Pax, like Pax was in front of you, or would you think that you had just gone crazy, or it was a mirage, or maybe maybe you were dreaming? I would have believed myself, but it would have been really hard to have, like, I would have rubbed my eyes, I'd be like, is that what I'm seeing? I would be like that. And now, so, do you think that Pax, um, so, so it said this, um, I'm just going to read the sentence uh, in chapter 34 on page 185. It says, Peter had apologized as best he could and I felt Pax understood and forgave him. So, from Pax's point of view, is really Pax really angry at Peter? No! I mean, do you think that Pax really, um, like, even needs to forgive Peter? Do you think that, um, Pax already loves Peter? I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah! But and so Peter is still thinking though that Paxus maybe was a little angry or uh, felt abandoned um, when 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 Peter left, right? And so um, that's just really two really different opinions, right? And because we're reading this book and we when we have both points of view, we we have the power to know that. Peter is wrong, right? So we're sort of getting the whole point, the whole view. And so 
I have a question. Do you like this whole view? Like, because this is, we're right now doing third person, right? Some other narrator, I don't know who this narrator is, but this narrator is relating the events and the, first of all, in Peter's point of view, and then also in Pax's point of view, and that is how we know everything, right? And so, third person really gives you some much more information. I mean, um, gives you some, may, at times, not always, but at times some more information than if we were going in first person. And first person, though, it's more like, it, it makes you more tense at times. It doesn't give you a lot of information. And if you're Sherlock Holmes and you're solving, like if you're if you if you're with a detective, then that mystery becomes a little more tense than if you're just reading it from third person. Even though that might vary, and and some people think that's wrong. Um, some people, some other people think that is true. So we know everything, right? So do you like that you know everything, or do you like like the like the suspect like? Like, do you like it so that you don't really know a lot and you have to learn with the with the character? So, really, I'm saying, do you like third person or first person or second person? Second person, it is there, but I, I don't even like to go into that because um, even though I guess some books I have the book clubs about would go into that category of second person. I don't really want to talk about that, but if you really do like second person, then you can of course do second person. Um, it doesn't really matter to me. And now, so do you think that so if you if you have been Pax, right? Pax, he just saw Peter, and how do you think that Pax felt? And how did that Peter felt when they when when really no? What about just both of them? How do you think they both felt? So now, do you think that Pax, do you think that Pax and Peter, when they met together, um, it was just a really good time together, but then it ended when Pax suddenly just perked his ears off up and it was like, and he heard something, it's pop, right? And he went right back. So, do you think that, um, do, if you have been Peter, what would you have thought the Pax was doing? Maybe abandoning him or maybe thinking other things or still not trusting him or maybe tr or maybe just thinking of better things to do maybe maybe taking care of his family but i would have i wouldn't have really thought about that i would have thought about the next baby abandoning me right and so what do you think anyway and um now i have another question here and so um do you think that um, Pax will, will will come the next day, or do you think that Pax won't come? What do you think about that? And um, and so, but anyway, I wanted, I really wanted to talk about how Peter is feeling. He he has this emotional conflict here, and I think that it's really important to go into the depths of that before we actually go on to um, Pax's point of view in chapter thirty-five. Um, we are still gonna, we're still in Peter's point of view, okay? And so, he just had this really emotional conflict. And what do you think that you could maybe say to sort of relieve everything? How to relieve this emotional conflict? How to stop it? What do you think that you would have said maybe to help Peter? And also, here's another question. Do you think that in the end, with everything that happened at, um, well, second, first book, you know, right? And of course, we've all read the first book. Um, so, now, another thing I wanted to talk about is, uh, who was it? Ah, yes. What I wanted to talk about was who was hurt the most because of that incident in, of course, PAX number one, right? Um, what do you think, who, yeah, who was hurt for uh, most, Pax or Peter? So this is an opinion question, but maybe we can sort of think about it, Pete, and see who has been suffering more here. Well, if you think about it, Pax has been living a good life. He's been with Bristol, they got have pops, and he has been living a good life, right? Um, so when Pax's daughter was sick, that wasn't really a result of what happened back in 
in book one packs, so that wouldn't actually count, okay? That won't count. But just from that incident, I think that Peter, with all this emotional conflict, all these conflict, I think that Peter was affected mostly, uh, most harshly. And so, I have another question then, okay? I have a lot of questions. Let me tell, tell you that. And um, here is, do you think that physical conflict or mental conflict? What what do you think is more like hard or or challenging or, you know, what do you think is harder? Physical, mental, and how, and how do you think they go sort of blend it together in a way? Well, physical conflict like wars and fights, they can lead to mental, mental, right? They can be traumatic and actually so, and traumatically um, affecting. That's why some soldiers can be traumatic after a battle, war, um, um, and and also like. After battle, you might just see bloody images and you're like traumatized. So that's so mental is also really mixed in with that sort of right. Sort of all interwoven together and so interwoven that sometimes your head hurts. And um, so, but still, if you just had to choose one, what would you choose? Or actually, not that. That doesn't. That's just. That's just. I don't like those kinds of questions because like it makes you think about all the bad things. Just what about? What do you think was worse? Well, and if you can't choose it, I, I get you. Well, I think that both are equal, very, very bad, right? Physical conflict can lead to death, wound, um, hurt, sickness, right? And that might just be really bad. But also mental conflict, that can make you get hurt or ill, right? Because because you won't eat anything if you're really, really sad. And it'll just be so sad and it'll be so terrible to go through, right? Because it's mental conflict. And it's sort of like Peter here, he's having this conflict, he's he's having this at he's having this this he he just feels really sad. He thinks that everything is his fault. Even though that is not it, right? That's not it. But because of that, I think that both are equally saddening and, and important, I guess, uh, even though our world would be better without them. Um, I, yeah, so really, I think that both are equally bad. And now, let's go to chapter 35. And this is actually a short chapter. You can see it's less than a page. I mean, you might feel like a uh, Jaden is two pages, but if you put all the words together, then it will be less than a page. But... That doesn't mean that there's a lot to talk about, right? And now, do you think that um, Pax's kit will even survive the Broad Valley? And if it, then, but do you think that you can stand to hear about one more death? Because look at all the deaths that, been, that has been here. Pax's dad, mom, and many others. And now, if Pax's kid is at a, Oh no, right? So do you think that's gonna happen or do you think that's not gonna happen at all? And um and so um uh because Pax doesn't know about the poisoned water and Pax's kid keeps on drinking the poisoned water, right? Um yeah really how, do you think that they're gonna survive and but and so we actually know Right, we actually know that this is gonna happen. That maybe that that this water is poison. But do you think that it would have been more fun if we actually didn't know and we were with Pax and we we're like, what is happening with her? Or do you think? Or what do you think? I don't know. That's gonna be. I, that's something I have to think about. And that leads to another thing. Would you like the whole point, the whole point of view, to be all just about Pax or all just about Peter? Or both, both because I think that you know, you know, like it just—it's all interwoven, and you have to understand both sides to really get the full effect, the full meaning of this book. And I know that you know what I mean, right? And also, here is another question: that is, do you think that? You would have liked it more if uh, if this book had been first person or third person, or do you just not care at all? I don't 
really care, but I, I like third person. I like this version. I like this book. Now, uh, let's see. Oh, yes. Do you think that, do you think here, um, so Pax's is, um, um, kid is growing weaker, right? And if Pax even eventually knows what's happening, how do you think that Pax is going to feel? Yeah, her, his kid is going to die. That's going to feel really bad. But also what else? Well, he gave her that water, right? He let, she, he let her down to that water. He allowed it. And even though it wasn't his fault, he would feel guilty. Any parent would feel guilty, right? And so do you think it's better if Pax just didn't know about anything? Yeah, just to, just to not to make him guilty. And if you have been Pax, how would you have felt? Simile, you know? So so the simile, um, making a feeling into a simile, guys, is a two-step um, process. Number one, step number one is just identifying how this character feels and then you have to make it into a simile you're like hmm what's a good simile and at times maybe this can relate to personal events some things that you've experienced knowledge that you know about the world or it can be something else but either way i think that yeah simile is a really good way to stimulate your brain which is why i'm asking so many of them okay so we got a lot through that one page chapter, which is impressive, and I'm really impressed that you got through that, okay? So now let's go to chapter 36, which is back to Peter's point of view. Now, do you think that, do you think that really Peter is um, really enjoying his going back to his house, or do you think it's just too painful? And, um, an, and another question is, why do you think that Peter, he, he just has these, why do you think that Peter um, wanted to go back to his house in the first place? Just because, yeah, we get an answer, right? He wants to live on his own and all that. But, um, so yeah, that's our answer from Peter, right? But do you think that's the real answer? And if that is the real answer, because some people do think that, then here's another question and that is do you think that peter's really enjoying it or do you think that he just wants to go back to vola and if you have been peter what would you have liked i would have liked to go back to vola definitely and then we're actually going to talk about another thing and that is like how when he just goes into these certain rooms or places he gets out of some like these visions these memories right and memory number one actually I, let me just read that one okay and it's this on the first day he'd walk and also this is um a, this is page 192 and 193 in case you're interested okay it says on the first day he'd walked into his father's room to look for a windbreaker and had and been uh, ambushed by a brutal vision his father that day he'd gone around collecting all his mom's belongings eyes bringing eyes brimming face purple pulling her clothes from the closet from this closet himself at seven years old understanding only that this man was all he had now and therefore whatever he did was to be accepted he didn't want to help he couldn't have anyway his arms were frozen to his sides but he'd follow room to room watching the pile grow higher and higher that night peter had crept down to the basement where the pile had been ended up had ended up he slipped a few things out and hidden them there and hidden them a pair of her favorite knee socks knee socks candy cane striped a phoenix bracelet some peppermint tea bags a drawing he'd done for her birthday he'd always been grateful he saved those items he'd given vola the bracelet but the other things were in his duffel bag now and will be heading down the river soon with the water warriors transport but that that doesn't really um memory that isn't really part of the memory sorry i i, I did an extra a paragraph but really we can see from the first um let's see i guess that would be first uh three paragraphs first three paragraphs right see so num paragraph number one is this, right? And the paragraph number two is here, and it goes over to here. And this is paragraph number three. And those are the paragraphs that really have your memory. And have you ever been to a place or just have a thing that would just make you have a memory before? And now, 
Why do you think that this memory was important? I know, I know. Um, it was important because Peter had had this memory, but just after that, the memory itself. Um, why didn't that memory was important? Just in the book, just to the reader, to you. Well, it really goes into the depth. We sort of learn what happened after um, Peter's mother died, right? We didn't really know. I mean, we know that Peter's mother had gone to a car, had killed, had been killed in a car crash, and that Peter went to the therapist. So that was from book one, but we didn't really know really, right? We just heard it from these bits and bits and pieces of memories. But here, we really learned that what happened, his fa Pax's father, he had been really angry, he had been taking everything, everything, and I've been putting it, and I just put it in a big pile, and then Pax has sneaked out a few of them, and that was why he had those special items um, in book one and book two, right? And so we learned that this new information, so that's why I think that the memory is really, really important. And I have a question. Do you think, what, what are, uh, what do you think might be another memory that, if you have been a writer, maybe what, another memory to make really everything, everything clear, this really clear, like what happened before book one? What might be a few other memories you might want? Well, I think that maybe before his mom went, or maybe after, like maybe the funeral or. Um, something like that. So it was some more detail about how they left. I mean, we know like the basic thing, but really how they left, how they felt when they left, all of that. Maybe we could have had that, but because we don't really have that information, we have to we have to guess. We have to predict, right? Well, not predict, but we have to guess, which is a really fun thing. But my question here is. Do you, do you like predicting and guessing, or do you like to just plain truth? Both. I mean, if you know everything, then that would be pretty boring. But, I, but uh, uh, yeah, but still, um, at the end, so I like to guess, but at times you still need some truth, right? Or like, you'll never get anywhere. So it's a half half to me. What about you then? Okay, now, do you think that uh, Peter will survive with the garden? And if you've ever survived with just your garden, and I'm pretty sure you haven't, then have, do you think that you'll manage it? And if you and have you ever tried it? And now, uh, do you think that it's really likable? It's really um, like the do you think that the conditions are right for Peter to live, or do you think that Peter is not going to live? And even if he did live, do you think that soon enough people when if people have, people are gonna come back, right? After because the war's finished, and when they come back, do you think that Peter is going to be um kicked out and put into like an orphanage or something, or do you think that Peter's just gonna live there? I I think that he's not gonna get do. He's not gonna end up with any of those. I have another. I have another idea. Vola. He's gonna go back to Vola. But we don't know that for right now. So what did you predict? And now. Chapter 37. And this is now back to Pax. And then there was Runt. Were you surprised when you saw Runt? How did you feel? And this time, yeah, not Pax, even though you could do Pax, but how did you feel? Um, I felt really happy and I was like, oh, wow, Runt came. And it's been such a long time since I've seen Runt. It feels like such a long, long time. So I was like, Run! Right, and I was really happy to see Runt again. And now, so, do you think that Bristle here, when Bristle hears that um, Pax's, um, pa the daughter, her daughter is okay, how do you think she's gonna react? And also, with Runt around, do you think that everything is gonna be all perfectly fine and they're gonna live happily ever after? Maybe not then, this is not a fairy tale, but, I still think that they are gonna have a good time and possibly they are gonna, yeah, they are gonna be happy. Um, that is if they are lucky. And Runt actually um, helps, but I have no idea how Runt would help. Food catching? Um, I don't know. Because Runt, I mean, can he carry um, Pax's daughter? No, I, I don't know how he's gonna, how they're gonna survive. And besides, what do you think is going to happen to um, 
pass it. Um, what do you think is gonna happen to pass it on anyway? What's your prediction? I thought that she was actually gonna die, or maybe she was gonna get rescued by some water warriors, but that wasn't the case, right? What was the case? Because you already have read the whole book, so you should know, right? But, yeah. Here's the blank. And I'm not gonna see anything for about 10 seconds, okay? Of course, you could have also paused the video, but um, this these 10 seconds were also time for me to drink. And now, let us, let's continue in the book. Now, do you think that Runt here, do you think that he was gonna help any, uh, or do you think that Runt wasn't gonna help? What What do you think? And do you think that um, Pax's daughter is in like really grave danger and there's no use or saving her, trying to save her, do you think that there is hope? This reminds me of the movie, um, Star Wars movie, the first movie, you know, A New Hope, um, when, and if you haven't watched the movie then it's a spoiler, so please skip ahead a little, but, you know, in the book, I mean, in the movie, like the Empire is taking control and like, then there's a Death Star and the Rebels are sort of losing, right? And then Luke comes as a new hope. There's just this new hope at, at when they free Princess Leia and the Death Star blows up. Um, so that's new hope, right? Basically like here, uh, well, you can fill it in for yourself. And so now let us go to chapter 38 because um, we have finished chapter 37. Well, anyone could figure it out if, if we were going to chapter 38. So I'm just saying the obvious, but I, I like to say the obvious. And now, do you think that is fair for, it? do you think it's right for um, um, Peter to get the food from the old woman or do you think not? What do you think? Well, no, because the old woman wanted Peter to have some, excuse me? Well, no, because the woman wanted Peter to eat something, right? And and she would have given her, and I'm pretty sure that she would have given him food um, on this day if she had been around. And besides, she's not gonna use it, it's gonna all expire, and she, she's not gonna use it right now. So, might as well put something to use. So I think that's perfectly fine. It's not stealing, and it's a good thing. And now, were you surprised about how much food uh, Peter found and this how long do you think it's gonna last if he actually lasts a good If he if he eats sort of scarcely not scarcely but if he eats like not too much I'm pretty sure this will last him the whole winter right and maybe even a little into the spring um, Just I, I think that um, maximum it will last him like three months and that is if he really saves his food and now it's like <gasps> Like like he's not what I mean by this. Um, you might be like is Jaden juggling food? I just mean like if there was a lot of food, like like he was shoveling food into his mouth. Like if I had two fruits here, and I'm like, <clears throat> because I am not Garfield. And if you watch the Garfield cartoons, you know, um, I'm talking about the um the ones, you know, Garfield and friends. Like how Garfield's really good at eating lasagna. I was impressed about with his skills. Um. I'm not Garfield, and Peter's not Garfield, so I'm pretty sure that he isn't gonna be like that uh, and eat all of the food Garfield style in one day, right? Even though Gar yeah, Garfield could, but no human being could do that. And so Pax isn't coming to Peter, right? And if you haven't been Peter, Peter do you, would you have thought that Pax had abandoned um, him, abandoned him, or do you think that you would have thought, oh, Pax is just away, it's no big deal. I don't know. I think that I would have mixed feelings about everything. And then suddenly, Pax's kit um, arrived and she was about to drink from the water. And luckily, Peter knew that the water was bad. Unlike Pax, it wasn't Pax's fault, I'm just saying. And did you think that pa that Peter was gonna get Pax before, and not, not, not Pax, I mean Pax's kit before she drank the water or not? I think that she's gonna, she, um, Pax, I mean, Peter is gonna get her, but, um, 
still I was worried and if it, so do you another question really is do you think that Peter right Peter when he threw that um, jar of peanut butter how, how do you think that he felt because he might have been aiming for the for the kit right how do you think that he felt and how would you feel and now this time I'm also gonna do a simile let's do it together okay and so let's see let's see if I can think of one so first of all first step what would Peter be feeling terrified okay terrified my brain put it into my brain here it's supposed to come out the other year. I, I'm not talking about like how it goes into one year and goes out the other year. That, that's one expression. But I'm just talking about like I can put a word into my ear and my brain will work. And out of the other year, ta-da, uh, you know, the simile will come out. Hmm. But I have to focus and concentrate. Hmm. Oh, here's one. I felt as if I was on top of a roller coaster and it, the roller coaster stopped you know like how um a roller coaster is like whoosh, like this but then it goes up and up and then like when it's just really up it just stops like when you're like a hundred feet in the air and you're like and like it's like about to go the best it stops and it's like this is silent moment and you're like ah! and then something like Shoo! Like, and you'd be terrified, right? And that's basically how I think that Peter, or at least if I had been Peter, I would have felt like that. And, and I, I don't know, maybe Peter also felt the same way. And after this, do you think that Pax will not trust Peter? And if you have been Pax, would you have still trusted Peter? I think I would have trusted Peter, but still, um, that, that incident would have surprised, and maybe yeah, it would have surprised me a lot, though. So, now chapter 39. Here, uh, we see that we are going to pack this point of view so that sort of answers our questions. And, which is good, right? Because I hate being like, put like, I hate when I'm put, um, like, I don't have the answer. I just hate it a lot. But luckily that's not gonna happen, right? No. And we, yeah, p packs here, um, Pax is uh, Pax is sort of angry that uh, that the kit what had gone now, right? And but still, I don't really blame the kit. And so, do you think that um, if you hadn't Pax, do you think that you would have thought of any response when when your daughter said you said your boy was not dangerous, but he threatened? So, what would you have thought? What would you have respond? I would have said, no, he's not a threat. He was just acting. I don't know why, but he was acting. And then, and then, um, I really want to talk about these two pages. So I'm just going to say all these two pages, which are pages 108 and 109. I mean 208 and 209, sorry. And let me just read these pages, okay? Both, so it's going to take a long time, so you might as well follow along. Or if you just, or if you just want to close your eyes, then you can close your eyes. Okay, let me start. Often, his boy used to, f oh, okay, actually, no, 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 go down a little, okay. Those times were different from today, though. Pax remained puzzled. My boy meant no harm. He felt sadness and concern. The kid wanted to know how he could tell this with the wind blowing away from the boy. This Pax could explain. He called to us in his grief-yearning tone. His grief-yearning tone? Pax reflected on the many times he had heard this tone from this boy. He'd heard it most often when Peter sat alone in his nest room. It had been strong the final days he'd seen his boy last year when pa Peter had packed his possessions into a box, when he wailed as the car peeled away, when he sent Pax away the day with the coyotes. But Pax shared a different memory with his kit, one from his earliest days with Peter. I was in my pen, hungry. My boy had not fed me that night. There had been angry shouting between him and his father in the afternoon, and he had run away and had not come home by sunset. I grew anxious, pacing in my pacing my pen. He came back so late, the moon was high. He brought me food. He sat beside me as I had 
ate, soothing me in his grief yearning voice. My boy lay down in the straw bedding with me, and even in sleep, the grief yearning scent hung in, uh, on him all night. It was both sorrow and, wa and want. Still, the kit did not understand. It is like the grief call of foxes. Pax sh had shared this cry with the so skulk of foxes when Gray died, and when Bristle, Bristle had gotten and with Bristle when Runt had gotten hurt. But he understood that this that his kid would never had never heard it. You know you will know that call, but humans alone know the grief yearning. And now now it's not exactly two pages, but about a page and a half I guess. But of course we're not talking about the number of pages, we're talking about the words on the page, the meaning. And the meaning is, I think is really important. So why would you imagine a grief yearning tone as? Um, and if you had to say a grief yearning tone, how would it sound like? Hmm. I think. I'm not a very good actor. I, I, I'm really bad at laughing. Like, this is my laughing. Ha 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 ha. Okay, that's really unrealistic, sorry. I was just joking, but I can do better, but, um, my that's not the point we're really getting off point a lot today and um so yeah acting skills i know if your acting skills are bad no worries but just how you can just imagine in your brain then that's good enough and so why do you think that uh pax just knew about this grief yearning tone like if you this grief hearing tone, just that tone, right? That was just so important for Pax to know that his boy hadn't been a threat. And and do you think that Pax is misjudging his boy or not? He is misjudging. Pax is a genius and Pax just knows everything. I think that Pax is really smart because he knows everything, right? Correct! I mean the grief hearing tone that makes perfect sense. We we all of us humans have experienced it, right? Now and then these people came, right? What? Do, who do you think that these people are? And do you think that Pax, Pax's promise was, I will see you safe. But do you think that the kit will actually um, survive? And do you think that Pax is actually gonna keep the promise? Yes, he does in the end. But of course, I it was a different way than I thought it would be. But I'm not gonna say anything for right now. Now, chapter 40. Um, which is Peter's point of view. And so Peter was wondering, stupid, stupid, stupid. Have you ever said this to yourself? I really, have you ever said, oh, stupid, stupid, stupid. Have you ever said that? Maybe, maybe once or time, twice. And do you think that, pa if you haven't Peter, would you have thought that Pax would ever forgive you again? And would you even forgive yourself? Well, I think that Pax would forgive me, but I don't know if I would forgive myself. I think I would in the end, but I will still sort of be hard on myself at first because I shouldn't have done that. At least in my opinion, I shouldn't have. And some people would have thought the same thing. Some people wouldn't have because... And still, Pax, I have saved Pax's daughter a little, so I should have be, I should be proud of myself. I, yeah, I guess so. And do you think that... Do you think that Pax, I'm uh, not Pax, do you think that Peter should have burned up his old room? Or do you think that he should have just kept it? I mean, it was his room, and he, he was reminded of this, um, of the phoenix, right? But do you think that this is really going to turn out like a new life is going to come or not? I really think that a new life is going to come, but do you think that burning something down is like the right thing? I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe so, but maybe not. I think that... Pax, I mean, not Pax, I'm getting mixed up. Both are P names, you know? So both start with P, so I'm getting mixed up here. And so, but burning down the, their, down this room, that's not the answer in my opinion, but some people get three different ways. But I just don't think that's the answer, but um, books are books, right? We can't really change them. And, and then um, this Pax just set um, the kid down with Peter and he left, right? Um, how much willpower do you think they would have taken? Like, and do, if you had been Peter, would you, would, do you think that you could have done that, that much willpower? But do you think that was the right thing? And also, what does this show about how much Pax trusts Peter? Do you think that 
how do you think that just shows that Pax trusts Peter? I mean, I would never, tr if I have been a parent, I would never trust like a stranger or somebody who I didn't like with my kid, right? So the fact that Pax was like, this person is gonna take care of you, right? Just that fact, I know that Pax still trusts and loves Peter. Like Peter, trusts and loves Pax, right? And now, do you think, if you have been Peter, do you think that you could have managed to help her? Or do, would you be like, um, I have no idea what I'm gonna do and I, I'm, I'm right now panicking. Not that, but I would still be like, what should I do? And I should be, I would be a little thinking, I'd be like, and I would have no idea what to do. But I think that I, I that my, that the kid would have survived and yeah, would have survived. And do you think that, do you think that, um, that putting the kid out of the mid, out of its misery, 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 do you think that's the right thing to do? No, so in the end, do you think that Peter's gonna do that or not? I just know that Peter isn't gonna do that, but still, I was pretty terrified by the thought. Okay, now, so I really wanted to go back to that fire because I think that was just a really huge, important part of the book. So, here, so, you know, the phoenix, it comes out of ashes, more new and good, right? And uh, do you think that, even if you don't actually burn things down, um, um, can you think of an example? Now, uh, if you have been packed, would you suddenly have just turned back? Or would you have, um, and just come back? Or would you just run and run and run and not turn back? I just run and run and run. Um, but, and, but really, I wanted to talk about something else here, and that is the backpack, right? When Peter put uh, put um, the kit in the backpack, Pax knew that the kit was gonna be all right because it said this. But then, so I'm just gonna read these few sentence, sentences, and it said, still Pax hesitated, torn. But then Peter tucked the kit into his backpack. At that, Pax felt his anxiety release. The pack had been a secret catch it. Catch, catch it. I have no idea how to, uh, to pronounce that word for this for his boy. Season after season, year after year, Pack Peter had kept that pack with him, worn close to his body. Pack himself had been sheltered there. So this happened. The backpack was a special thing, and when that backpack had sort of been, and when the kid had been in the backpack, he felt all right. Now this is a really hard thing to really do in real life, but can you think of like an important thing, and even if you're worried just seeing that important thing, maybe will help you? Well, I can't really think of a good example, but like if you're worried about the disappointment, and if you're like a little kid and you have a stuffed animal, maybe just seeing that familiar stuffed animal will help you. I know that isn't the best, but, and that's what I thought of. It, it's pretty close, I, I think, I think. Now, chapter 42. And so Peter here, we're going back to Peter, and if you have been Peter, do you think that you would have the courage to go in, or would you just be like, I can't go in, no, I'm not gonna go in. I would go in, I would go in, but it would be really hard to do so, to see my the grave of my mom, right? And in the end, when, so I'm just gonna skip ahead a little and, well, I'll skip, really skip ahead, but that, 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 that time at the cemetery, how do you think that changed him? How do you think that, that changed Peter? And also, do you think that um, Peter's decision to not put the kid out of his misery, do you think that was a good um, thing? And do you think that if Peter takes care of it, do you think that it's gonna, that the kid's gonna grow up to be as strong as Pax? I think so, definitely. And it's gonna have a good life. But do you think that this fox will also be, will be in the wild after this? Or do you think that he's got, she's gonna stay? Do you think it's the best thing for the fox? But, Really, let's go back to here, okay? To back to the book, um, to where we are right now, and then so Peter has the Peter has the strength to open it, um, the willpower. So if you have been Peter, would you have been able to, or would you just chicken out? What do you think? And then we read this letter, letter, and that really surprises me, right? So, um, so let me just read this, okay? 
Okay, let's see. Okay, let me read it. I saw you once. You came to the base here on crutches to see your dad. After you came, he started hunting me down to talk. See, I was about to be a fought twins, and I went, guess I went on about that. I was so proud. I'm sorry I don't remember your name, but I should because you are who he talked about all the time. How tough you were, all the smiles on those crutches. That's proud of that. And that you were smart and kind like your mom. Said you had a way with the animals. Nearly magic, he said. And said you shouldn't be without. He said he owed you for that. Something about a lost fox. I don't remember. Anyway, I, I know he would want me to tell you something he didn't deserve. He did go A O W O L, but he didn't deserve. He had a reason. And the reason was me. Sorry, yeah, my, my, my pages are stuck together. Ugh, here. He, he, what happened was this. I hadn't heard from my wife in over a week. The babies were due soon, so I wanted to find out that she was okay. I couldn't go home. Nobody could leave. I was scared to sneak out. Not that it would be dangerous. There would be no fire around, but with two babies coming, I couldn't afford to get discharged to lose my pay. Still, I was about crazy, so I decided to go. And your dad, he said he knew something about worrying about a wife who, go, who goes missing one day. So he went to my place. Four hours there, four hours back. He wouldn't miss, he wouldn't even be missed, he said. He'd find out if she was okay, give her some money and food I saved, and be back before re reveal at dawn. Except he wasn't. You, I figure you know that part. So he didn't deserve it. He ran a mission for a friend, and now two babies have a father because you don't. And your father has a paycheck, which was, which is not nothing. I never told. I, I'll carry this shame for my whole life, but I'm hoping you'll keep my secret because these two babies still need their father's paycheck. But I guess that's up to you. I thought you should know the truth. I'm sorry. Private Thomas Roberts. So I think that this was a very important part. Um, most things, a lot of book, um, a lot of parts in this book are really important. But I think that's it was like top two most important parts. One of them. <clears throat> so why I think that it was important was that we just learned the whole truth. Were you surprised about this whole truth? And if you had been Peter, would you be like, that private Thomas Robert, I'm going to kill him. Or would you be proud that your father had done this? I would have been proud. I would have been sad, but I'd have been proud. I'm like, I'm impressed. And I would have been, every time I read it, I would be proud. Like Peter, right? Peter was proud. And so, do you think, what do you think the rightful anyway symbolized? Death and Bad things. I think that was what the rifle symbolized. I just want to touch on that for a sec, okay? And so now, do you think that um, Pat, I'm not Peter, when he goes back to Vola, how do you think everything is going to be okay? And um, do you think that Pat, Peter, and Vola are going to live together for the rest of their lives? I think so, right? Now, chapter 43. Pax ran and ran, and then he saw that his puffs and bristle, and there his puffs had changed. But do you think that it was a good change? And if you happen, Pax, how would you have felt? Simply, please, I'm gonna also do one. Here's one. So I'll feel really proud and happy. And here's um, I felt as if I'd be just elected president, right? I would be proud. I'd be surprised. I'd be so happy, right? How I would feel basically the same as Pax, right? Instead, he didn't get elected for presidency, but still, it, it would feel that good, right? And so, now, do you think that in the end, it's just really happy, bittersweet, right? And do you like bittersweet moments or just do you like sweet moments? I like sweet moments, but bittersweets are also good. And everybody's happy they rejoined, and it's just a good part in, in my opinion. But if you haven't bristled, would you have been sad? And would you and about about everything about your lost daughter, or would you be happy that she was in good hands? But if you haven't bristled, would you have even thought that she was in good hands? I know. So I. I but if I haven't bristled now, 
I know we all know that Peter is a good person, but if I had been Bristol and I didn't even know Peter, I'd be a little unsure. But I would trust my mate, which would be Pax, and I would say, yeah, I think that he's that um that Peter is a good person, even if I've never actually met him. Okay. So now 44, Peter. This is our last chapter. Okay. And if you and if you have been Peter, would you have been nervous about going to Vola, or would you be happy? but mostly I would be happy to have like he was home right I was home and were you surprised about how casually and coolly Vola greeted him and were you also surprised that um that Peter's grandfather had been visiting and why didn't he have been visiting like what do you think was the real reason right so he says that he's helping out but what do you think is the real reason here and and do you think that uh, the kid will be a good addition to the family? And if you haven't pulled out, would you have allowed this kid? And how would you have felt about the kid? I would have been like, oh, cool! And I would have petted the kid. And I would, I think that um, the pet, that this, that the kid will be so, it will be just a really great addition, a third member of the family, right? I think that's good. Yeah, I think so. And finally. We are gonna talk about Sliver, which is the name, right? This is this is cute little Sliver over here, and we're gonna finish it with just one. And so we have actually finished, right? But I have one more question before we're actually gonna go to the favorite characters and stuff like that. We all know what I'm gonna talk about. And here, so finally. Peter comes back, and when Peter comes back, do you think I realize that Bola, that that um, this is where he belongs? Do you think that this is where Peter belongs? And in the end, everything that's happened, do you think that Peter has done the great, in the right thing? And how do you think that maybe the find the just the the, help, the keeping of um, Pax's daughter now Sliver? How do you think that she helped? Well, because Sliver was just a great addition to the family, she was kind and, and she just really, really, she added this meaning to, to Peter. And I think that, that, yeah, Sliver was a really, really, really important part in the book and, and how now, um, pa and, and now how uh, Peter is feeling, okay? And now we're finished. I, I'm really proud of you guys, so let's just zoom through these questions, okay? What was your favorite part in these chapters, chapters 34 to 44, and then what was your favorite part in the whole book? Well, I can't choose, but I think that in these chapters, I have to say, when we read that letter from that private John, private, uh, that, that captain, and also just the cemetery, so even though it was sad, I, I also really liked that part. But the whole book, I just can't miss aside. The most your favorite character and your least favorite character. My favorite character, and you can do two if you want. My favorite characters were Pax and Peter, but I, I think I like Pax more this time. But though Peter was awesome. And how did you like the book? I always like this question, and it's awesome because we actually just we learn how did you like the book, right? And you express, which I think is really important. And Really fun and awesome. You know, I love this book. I love almost, I love all the books that I do. I, I don't do a book club about a book I don't like before. I've never done that. And, and so, um, I really think that it was a good book, which was why I did a book club about it. I mean, why would I do a book club about a book I didn't like? So, uh, and I didn't think it was worthy, but this passed the test really close to my heart. I love this, okay? And finally for predictions. Do you think that the little pup, right, um, the little kit, do you think that it's going to be happy with Peter? And do you think that Pax is going to get, is how, and do you think that Pax is going to be happy? And, but real, and do you think that Ron is going to get a mate? And also, do you think that the kid is going to um, meet, um, is going to go wild soon? Or do you think it's just going to live with Peter for the rest of his life, for, of her life? And do you think that Peter, what do you think that he will be when he grows up? What and what? Yeah. What? How do you think that Peter will be when he grows up? And um, even though he's lost his mother and father, right, his parents, do you think that Peter in the end will come out strong? 
definitely. And if you've thought of any questions that you've made, and of course, ask them to see yourself. Because actually, the, at times, the most hard questions are the questions that you ask yourself. That's a new fact that I learned. Because I do all these questions, I no help, and sometimes I have to think about the answers, right? You've heard me say, hmm, I'm gonna have to think about that. I'm not lying. Now, hope that you enjoyed Pack's Journey Home by Sarah Pennybacker. I really enjoyed, and I hope that you enjoyed this awesome book, okay? Um, have a great rest of your day or night, because I also have a very fair tonight, and I also just want to say bye, okay? Because we finished. Bye! And the book is all saying bye. Bye! Yeah, really just bye. Hope you enjoyed.